guys, my name's Brad. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. So our text today, we are in chapter 15, and it's hard to believe we are almost all the way through the Gospel of Mark, and once again, we just pray that you are being blessed as we are able to share in this time together. But we look at chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5 and see what is recorded for us uh, here in, in Mark's Gospel. The Bible reads, Very early in the morning, the chief priest and with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. We have seen thus far as we have come to the end of the Passion Week in Mark's Gospel of all that Jesus has had to endure up to this point. And we know that he was betrayed by Judas, a close friend. Uh, All of the disciples uh, deserted him, and they fled at a time of of his greatest need. And so here we we see him brought before the the religious leaders. He's standing before Pilate, uh, these mock trials, and and we see him now uh, uh, um, uh, inching closer and closer to the cross, the fulfillment of the Father's will. And so here he is, brought before Pilate early in the morning, and Pilate is really wanting Jesus to kind of give an answer to to these accusations, the things that they are saying. He's wondering, Jesus, are you going to even reply? Are you going to say a word about this? And I want you to notice verse 5, it says, Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. I cannot help but think, as we are in the throes of the gospel here at this moment, all of the Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled by Jesus in the midst of his suffering. And we are taken back to Isaiah 53. In Isaiah 53, we have the prophet giving us the suffering servant, uh, probably the most vivid description in the Old Testament regarding exactly what would happen to our Savior Jesus Christ. And it is in Isaiah's uh, uh, prophecy, uh, chapter 53, uh, he begins to lay out uh, the, the suffering of Jesus. Hundreds of years before Jesus would be born into this world, we see the prophet declaring what would come to pass. And it says in Isaiah 53, verse 4, it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Notice verse 7, though. Listen to this. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shear is silent, so he did not open his mouth. And what we find throughout the gospel, what we see happening in the life of Jesus, is that we know that Jesus was true to who he was. He was true to what Old Testament prophecy predicted of him and what came to pass. He was true to who he was. Time and again, even when we began this Gospel of Mark and all the way through his earthly ministry to this moment, as he's inching closer and closer to the cross, Jesus was true to who he was. You know what that means for us? It means that we can trust in who he is. Because Jesus was true to who he was, we can trust in who he is. And that's great assurance for us. All that he endured, just as the prophets predicted, all that is unfolding, we can put our trust in Jesus. We can put our faith in him, that he's exactly who he said he was, and he did exactly what he said he was going to do for us. And so, yeah, Pilate, it says here, was amazed. And a lot of people look at Jesus, and they are amazed by him, but let that amazement be moved to acknowledgement, and we put our trust in Jesus Christ. So let me have a word of prayer with you as we wrap our time up together. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on your suffering we reflect that all that you're endured, you are sitting before Pilate, you are, you are there before him, and you didn't say a word. You endured every bit of the suffering that came upon you, just as the Old Testament predicted, the fulfillment of Scripture. You are true to who you are. And as a result, Lord, I'm so thankful we can put our trust in you. and We can find life. We thank you for your holy word. And may we take to heart uh, what you've recorded for us and And that no matter what we experience in this life, no matter what's happening in this present moment, we can trust in you. So we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
God bless, guys. See you next time. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.